Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Doris and I'm here to share with you about my stock account and today's market update. I've been running my account for a total of 10 days and the yield is positive 5.65%. And now my stock account value is $106,500. And then I'm going to talk about the US stocks market in general and how it has fled for their lives in the last three days. And next, I'm going to talk about the home prices and the home selling environment in the United States. I've gained a total of 5,596.42 today. And that's because the stocks in my account, SQQQ, which is an ETF that sells short on Nasdaq Composite, it rose 7.17% today. I gained $5,051.43. And also the real estate, I've gained 1.97% and that's equal to $545. All three major US stocks indexes turned higher on Wednesday morning, but they did not hold on. We can see that today, this morning, it rose before 10 a.m. and then steadily drops until it closed. The same applies to other indexes. Looking at the industry heat map, it's unfortunately all red except for auto manufacture industry, which I think it's a slight recovery from the 5% drop yesterday. The market is doing its best to surface the mid shrinking volume, but the stock market's Christmas rally goes off to a disappointing start. As for this year in general, the stock market has faced some of significant uncertainties, such as the global coronavirus pandemic, the Russian-Ukraine war, and the Titan energy supplies in Europe and the hawkish central banks in the United States. These factors will continue to weigh down the market next year. Matt Maley, chief market strategist at Miller Tabak Plus, said, the market could get a tipping point from the Fed later next year to really start cutting rates, and that the market would be far worse than it is now. If economy continues to decline as slowly as it does now, the Fed will fix the policy rate at a high level even if it stops raising interest rates. Home sales have historically been a good driver of economic activity, as home sales support many other industries. At the same time, interest rate will continue to rise as the Fed continues to signal a hawkish stance. In short, investors are hoping for much anticipated soft landing, but challenges remain. And next, we're going to look at the US home sales for this year to examine how this metric signifies the performance of the market and the buying power of the consumers. Here, let's take a look at the data from United States Census. We can see that in January, the number of new privately owned houses sold and for sale is 831,000 units. And that continued to decrease all throughout this year until November, it's been decreasing to 640, which is a 5.8% increase, but in general, in this year, it has decreased for 15.3%. That signifies a shrink in the real estate market. And that is caused by the rising interest rates because people are more sensible to interest rates as they get the 30-year debt from the banks. And those debts become much harder to pay off because the interest rates are getting higher. Even so, the Fed is trying to avoid recession, but Citigroup economists warned Wednesday that the United States could slip into recession by the middle of the next year. Mike Scott, portfolio manager at ManGLG, said, Leveraged low market is also our concern. He noted that the U.S. leveraged low market has swelled rapidly in the recent years and the size of leveraged loans issued in the United States in 2021 was more than double than before in the 2007 financial crisis. If the Fed continues to pursue aggressive monetary policy, the default rate could rise to 9% next year, which could be the highest level since the financial crisis. 2023 will be the time when quantitative tightening really start to have a negative impact and will cause the stock market to plunge. 
The Fed's quantitative tightening lagged relative to expectations in 2022, but is set to accelerate in the next year. Money market funds, MFF, remains less interested in buying U.S. Treasury bills, which means that QT will increasingly have a negative impact on liquidity and risk assets. The Fed began reducing its balance sheet through QT through quantitative tightening in June this year. Since then, the balance sheet has shrunk by $350 billion, well below the Fed's target of $560 billion. That's in large part because the rising interest rates means fewer mortgage-backed securities to maturity as mortgage borrowers prepayments fall. However, the Fed may start to sell in MBS outright, which will accelerate the pace of its balance sheet reduction. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.